We finished the subfloor! Hey guys, I am back in Austin to work on the van. Last time you saw me working on the van, I had just finished the roof as well as the ladder. And now it's time to work on the inside of the van, which is definitely the most exciting part because that's how we can kind of put our own little spin on it, make it feel like a home, but it's also the most daunting because we have so much left to do. So in the next week, I'm hoping to insulate the floor, do the subfloor as well, start working on the shower. Um, there's just a lot of logistics that go into putting the shower in and the gray water tank and drilling holes and stuff. So we wanna kind of check that out first and get that done. But before I get all that started, I get to go to Home Depot, <laughs> my new favorite place on earth. So this trip to Home Depot is extra special because it is the first time I'm gonna be driving the van all by myself with no one in the car with me and normally I have someone in the passenger seat which is pretty comforting because if someone's in the blind spot because there's not a lot of windows um, they can help me kind of figure it out but I'm on my own today so cross your fingers that I get there safely I made it to Home Depot in one piece and so did the van so there's two things I hate about driving the van right now one we don't have a radio so it was a very silent ride there because I forgot to turn on music on my phone speakers so I just sat there and just thought about how I did not want to crash the van and then the second thing is I hate not having the back windows right now because I'm so used to looking in the rear view mirror but when you don't have those windows there's nothing to look at so really excited to get those windows in hopefully in the next couple months once they get in stock since this is the new van and they don't have the same windows as the previous years. So the main reason I'm at Home Depot today is to get this builder's paper which we're going to use to make the template for the subfloor. So we're basically just going to cut up a bunch of pieces till we have a perfect template. I survived the drive to and from Home Depot! To be honest, I wasn't that worried, but this is significantly larger than any vehicle I've ever driven before. So it is a little nerve wracking when you're by yourself and you're on crazy roads and stuff, but I'm back and I'm safe and I'm feeling more comfortable driving the van. So it's time to get to work now. So here's what I'm gonna work on first. So I'm gonna take this paper that I just bought and I'm gonna start rolling it out into different sections and taping part pieces together and making our template. So I taped down this end of the paper to the van, that way it would stay still when I rolled it on out. And there it is at the other end, and I taped that in too. So now we have a brown carpet, a little fashion runway for the van. So the next step is to start doing all the smaller areas around the wheel well and all these areas, but I still have these cargo rings in. So my next step is actually to get those out and then I'll start working on the smaller areas. I just finished putting down all the paper to make our template for our subfloor, and this is what it looks like. So as you can see, I have a lot of tape. So some of that tape is just to attach it to the van so it stayed in place. Some of it's to attach pieces to each other, because I couldn't just do one big piece for everything. So I cut up quite a few smaller pieces. And then in some areas, there's a lot more because there's curves and little nooks and crannies that were just really hard to get a big piece to fit into or to cut pretty well. So I cut a lot of smaller pieces. So to be 100% honest, I'm not sure if this is the best or most efficient way to actually create your subfloor template, but this is the best way I could think of and I wanted to share that and you know maybe someone will learn from my mistakes or get a good idea, I don't really know. Um, despite having to cut up some thinner strips to fill in some gaps that I miscut and also having to fill in the nooks and crannies and use a lot of tape, I think this is actually a pretty good outline and pretty accurate to the space. So we'll see what happens. Next step is to basically take this out put it on a big piece of wood, trace it on the wood, and then cut the wood to fit this space. So, whew, <laughs> I hope it works out well because this was, this was easy, but it did take a little bit of time and it would kind of suck to have to redo all of it. All right, it is Friday evening. I worked all day and now it's finally time to work on the van. We had to run to Home Depot earlier and it's kind of delayed us a little bit. Um, to be honest, van building is going a lot slower than I had hoped or envisioned. I knew it was gonna be hard, but 
it's just you keep there's all these little things you just have to think of and once you think of them you have to figure out a solution to them and it just takes a lot of time so we're at we have a big disadvantage because we actually live in seattle but we're building our van in austin so we're flying back and forth which means that we don't get to work on it every day we get to work on it for like a week at a time and so we kind of lose momentum so we get a lot of stuff going when we're here and then we leave and we come back and it just feels like all the momentum has gone so it takes a little bit to get back in the swing of things also we both work full-time which is why Adam's not here he doesn't have the flexibility I have so I work remote for a fully remote company so I work all day from like 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then I come and work on the van from 3 p.m. till I go to sleep so getting a little bit of a later start today which kind of sucks but thankfully tomorrow is the weekend which means I will have all day to work on the van so here's the plan for the rest of the night so we bought all of these one by two prime boards that we're gonna use to basically create a frame on the van floor. And then in the gaps, we're gonna place all of the Havelock wool insulation. If you missed our insulation video, go check that out. We explain why we chose Havelock wool, all the benefits of Havelock wool. There are so many options when it comes to insulating your van, but for our needs and priorities, it was the best option for us. So we explain all about it in that other video. But the only downside about it is since it's wool and it's very soft, you can't just place the subfloor on top of it. So that's why we're creating the frame. That way the subfloor has something to attach to and it's nice and sturdy to walk on and we're not like bouncing all over the van. So we actually got the idea to do the subfloor this way from a couple we follow on Instagram called Finding Fresh Air. They also have a sprinter van and they also have Havelock wool and they have a really, really informative Instagram story highlight about all their subflooring that I watched to get all these ideas. So big shout out to them because they made it so much easier to figure out what to do and i highly recommend everyone goes and checks them out i'll link to them below so you can check out their story highlight and just see everything else they're doing with their van they're farther along than we are and they seem to be doing some pretty awesome stuff step number one cut up all the pieces i'm cleaning all the spots where we're going to glue down the boards with acetone just to make sure everything's very clean and then we add the Loctite marine adhesive which is what we're using to glue the boards down to the floor we're trying to eliminate screwing in a bunch of holes to the floor so that's why we're choosing this you've heard from other people that this is extremely sturdy and if we need to screw in in a few spots we'll do that and then we place some heavy objects on the ends and on the middle just to hold it down and secure it while it dries we made sure that the area from the end of this black area where the seats are to the middle of the board is 48 inches because our subfloor panel that we bought will lay right on there and then the other one will meet it right in the middle on that one as well. So we're trying to make sure that all the seams are on one of these boards. I made a huge rookie mistake today. I wore my nice pants and I ruined them. So I changed my shirt to a shirt that I don't care about as much. So in case I ruin this, I will not be as sad as I am about the pants. But now I have pants I can wear every time I build the van that are okay if they get messed up because they already are. We're making some good progress. We have all of the boards in. Some of them we still have some weights on just to hold them down and let them dry. So we're just gonna let them set for a little bit longer. And then we're gonna start filling in with insulation. So my next step is to measure all the spaces that the insulation will need to go so we cut the correct size. I made this nice little homemade diagram to keep track of all of the measurements and then we'll start placing that in. And our floor is insulated, woo! Now painting the subfloor wood with the primer to protect it from any moisture. We laid out all of the plywood with the prime side down and then put the template on top of it, getting it all lined up the way we want it so we have as many straight edges as possible to work with. And then we'll start tracing it and then we'll cut it out. If you remember those cargo rings I took out the other day, we are gonna use those holes that are left to screw this down into the van since they're existing holes and we don't have to drill any new ones. And so we used a pencil to just poke through the template into where that hole is so we know where to drill some existing holes. So we've marked all the cuts we need to make on the plywood. And now it's time to get her done. The subfloor pieces are in. They aren't attached yet though. So what we're gonna do is we're going to biscuit them together and then we're gonna wait until tomorrow to actually 
screw them into the framing that we made because we want to make sure the framing glue is fully settled. So we got the front two attached and the back two attached and we're using this clamp to hold these two together and we're gonna let them sit overnight and then we'll attach the final ones tomorrow and then screw them in to the framing that we did and then we'll be done. So our first task this morning was to attach the center pieces of the subfloor together with the biscuits and some glue. So that is all good to go now. And then if you remember those dots that we marked on the wood that would correspond with the cargo ring holes that are already in the floor of the van. We basically just drilled the holes for that in the wood this morning, put some bolts in and some washers to make sure that the van floor is extra secure. And then our final step is to draw some lines on this wood that match up with the framing underneath. That way we can screw everything together and everything is nice and secure so we can have dance parties without worrying about moving the floor. So we screwed in the subfloor to the framing below. We put in quite a few screws, just trying to make sure that everything's super secure and nothing bounces when we walk. We finished the subfloor. So if you couldn't tell, I'm really excited to finally have a subfloor in this thing. Dealing with like the bare van floor with all like the ribs and everything was kind of a pain. So it's nice to have like a solid foundation in the van now that we can use to build everything. So. This is the end of our subfloor vlog because the rest of my days here are gonna be spent more in the shower, so I will do a separate video for that. And then when Adam comes in a couple of weeks, he will also be working on the shower. So, ugh, out of breath, <laughs> having a dance party in this van <laughs> was exhausting, and even just like screwing and everything was a workout. So, I'm gonna go take a break. I will see you guys next time.